Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles and welcome to Power Talk, my weekly podcast. I'm a, uh, a board certified hypnotist, I am a life coach, uh, and I'm also a clergyman. And so this podcast focuses upon the hypnotic arts and sciences, the coaching disciplines, and spirituality, all aimed to help people take control of their lives through the power of their mind. My topic today is something called the hidden observer, which is a notion that comes out of hypnosis, but it is actually an ancient concept. Uh, hypnotist Dr. Ernest Hildegard, in his research in hypnotic pain control, realized that in hypnosis, a person is actually able to observe themselves and pain that they're in without having to actually experience that negative pain directly. They know the pain is there, but they're just observing it. They're not experiencing it, th it themselves. They become a hidden observer. And in that, in that moment of splitting off a part of themselves to observe what's happening, they achieve a degree of hypnotic anesthesia or analgesia, pain elimination or pain reduction. This notion that we contain parts and these parts in our mind can have different roles and that we can manipulate them using hypnosis or other techniques to allow us to have a degree of control over our, our experience that is huge. There is even a very complex part of hypnotic theory called parts theory that takes this even a step further, but I'll leave that for another video. We all talk to ourselves constantly. We all maintain an inner narrative, explaining the world to ourselves. Dr. Martin Segelman points out that we can have, live our lives with a learned helplessness or a learned uh, pessimism or a learned optimism. And the defining characteristic is what is our explanatory style? What are the principles we use as we talk to ourselves, as we maintain this inner narrative? Do we explain things in a positive and optimistic way, or do we explain things to ourselves in a negative and fearful way? Well, that latter is basically the default in the human nervous system because the human biocomputer evolved to help us survive. And fear makes a creature cautious. Cautious creatures tend to survive better than creatures that aren't cautious. And so what happens is those creatures pass on the fearful gene and fear and negative expectation have become the default setting in the human consciousness. And so most of us talk to ourselves in a negative way. We uh, critique ourselves needlessly. We avoid risks that we probably should rationally take. We engage in a toxic and destructive brew of words that we inflict upon ourselves. This process of going over and over negative things that have happened or might happen, called rumination, is an extremely damaging habit of the mind. But there is a fix. Use techniques that put a distance of some sort between your sense of yourself and the issues you confront. Neuroscientist Ethan Koss in his book uh, Chatter talks about this. He recommends, you know, sleeping on things, getting a difference in time, going on retreat, getting a difference in space, but fundamentally he recommends something very similar to the idea of the hidden observer. Uh, think about how you would explain what's happening to you to someone else and use the explanation in a way as being more rational and less fearful. So Koss recommends something along the lines of a, uh, a pronoun shift. Instead of saying, I'm afraid to take this risk. Use a different pronoun. Scott Giles is afraid to take this risk. Why? 
act as if you're giving advice to someone else. And then go a step further. What would someone you really respected make of the situation you're confronting? When people say, well, what would Jesus do? Or what would Batman do? Or what would Wonder Woman do in a situation like this? They're creating in their mind an imaginary consciousness, Batman, Wonder Woman, what have you, and asking that part of their divided consciousness to take the role of the hidden observer. And say, okay, what would you make of what I'm experiencing? And from the view of this separate part, often we're able to shift our perspectives and see things more objectively. So this notion of the hidden observer, explain what's happening to yourself, not in the immediate first person. Get some space by a word change and perhaps asking what some figure you really admired would do in a parallel situation. And that perspective shift will often enable you to do something different. Well, I might want to, uh, to yell and scream and act out, but you know, Jesus wouldn't do that, or Wonder Woman or the Green Lantern wouldn't do that. They would act in a very different way. Let me give that a try. And even if you're sort of just playing a role, the odds are that additional exterior perspective enables you to behave in a way that's less fearful, less based upon a negative expectation, and far more likely to land you in a good place. Now, I've talked about this technique from uh, uh, Dr. Cross uh, from uh, Ernest Hildegard but it's not a modern technique. They're repackaging something that is far, far older. This goes back into ancient philosophy. Now, some of you know that I order my life in accordance with a 3,000-year-old philosophy called Stoicism. And as Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hanselman in their book, The Daily Stoic, point out that the Stoics have been using this technique literally for thousands of years. Seneca, one of the great Roman Stoic philosophers, said, We can remove most sins if we have a witness standing by as we are about to go wrong. And uh, uh, Hanselman and Holiday point out that one of the great Stoic philosophers, Cato, is someone we know only about what other people have said about him. He didn't write anything himself, or if he did, it didn't survive. But he often shows up in stories that the Stoics would tell about the wise counselor who would intervene and give wise counsel about something that a person was about to make a mistake uh, with regard to. Uh, so this idea of having an imaginary figure in mind that gives us the additional perspective to provide some emotional and psychological space from immediate experience that allows us to take a more relaxed and measured view of what's happening and likely find options and a better course of action. I often find it amusing that some of the new uh, psychology or uh, human potential techniques that we see showing up in self-help literature are actually old wine and new wineskins. You know, they're, they're ancient techniques that have been known for a long time. They're just being repackaged and presented to a modern audience. Uh, there's a song by Peter Allen, Everything Old is New Again. And the lyrics are, When trumpets were mellow and every gal only had one fellow, no need to remember when, cause everything old is new again. Don't throw the past away. You might need it some rainy day. Dreams can come true again when everything old is new again. This ancient technique of the Stoic philosophers, of this internal spectator, this hidden observer, that 
you can say, well, what would Cato say? What would Jesus say? What would Buddha say? What advice would they give me about this situation? So instead of just reacting emotionally, I can make a more measured response, characteristic of someone I truly admire. That ancient technique is still being taught today in the universities and schools of psychology and by people like me. I just, because I love ancient philosophy, I know it's an ancient technique. Give it a try. I think you'll find that can be very, very helpful. So you have the ability to create a hidden observer. Create one intentionally. Choose some figure, real or otherwise, that you truly admire. And when trouble threatens, call on that image. What would so-and-so do? How would they respond? And then take the wise counsel that a part of your own mind is providing and take control of your life through the power of your mind. Hey, thank you for your time and attention. I'll be back next week with another talk. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. It does help me if you share my videos. If I can be of help to you, please feel free to reach out directly through my website, uh, my Patreon channel, or by email, or any method of communication that works. I really appreciate your attention, and I appreciate a lot the warm reception these videos are getting. So thank you all for that. Do well, stay well, stay safe.